um, we're going to be, let me go ahead and give you this up front, okay, before I pray. We're going to be, um, the verses we're going to look at, some of them will be on the screen, but we're going to look at John chapter 14, and then we're going to move to Galatians 5, 25, then we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4, so people taking notes, I just want you to be able to write those down, Philippians chapter 4, um, some of those verses in there, I can't remember exactly which ones. Um, and then we'll go back to Romans chapter 8, 1 through 5, then Romans 12, 1 and 2, and then we'll finish up with um, probably another Romans passage. But I just want to, in Romans 16, I just, want to, I just want to give you kind of an overall where we're going to go with the verses so you can write them down. And a little bit differently than what we normally do, I also want to give you five words if you take notes so you can write those down as well and be thinking about them while we go through the sermon, Okay. And those words are intentionally, intentionally, continually, humbly, humbly, obediently, and the final word is prayerfully. So intentionally, continually, humbly, um, obediently, and prayerfully. So that's a, the 30,000-foot flyover of what we're going to look at. We're going to start a seven-week um, seven week series on life in the Spirit. We just finished up a small um, series where we looked at who or what is the Holy Spirit, and then we looked at, um, last week we looked at how does He begin to transform us or how does He transform us. And we learned some important things about the Holy Spirit, if you didn't know it, he's co-equal with God, he's co-eternal, he is, uh, he's not less than, he is fully God. He comes to live in the heart, or in the body, if you will, the, uh, of every believer. That's, his, that's our guarantee. And so, I, and people have asked me before, well, how do we know for sure? How do we know? Well, if you're not a Christian, you won't. If you are a Christian, it's a promise from God. And that's where our faith comes in. So I want to start off before we jump into the actual um, sermon. Um, go with me to John chapter 14. And let me just show you this real quick. Or you can just listen, whichever you, whichever you choose. But if we go to John chapter 14 and looking at verses 15 through 18, here's what we get. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because, he does, because it doesn't see him or know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. And then he says, I am coming to you. So he was trying, if you don't know, John chapter 13 through 17 um, is, is the upper room before he goes to his crucifixion. And it's Jesus and the disciples. And so that's when he washes their feet. Um, he serves them at the table. Uh, that's where Judas is called out. Um, and what else is there? Um, he tells them he's going to have to go away. They don't want him to go. But then he says, if I don't go, then the Holy Spirit can't come. This is all found in that part of John. And then chapter 17 is Jesus' prayer. Um, and, and I can't imagine what it would have been like, what it would have been like to be the disciples, to hear Jesus, who was fully God, fully man, praying to his heavenly Father, praying to his Father. I can't imagine what that prayer would have been like. But uh, to be in that room, we have the, the words in the Bible, but I can't imagine what that would have yeah. It's mind-blowing to me. And so that's where we get, okay? So we, we get the Holy Spirit. And he lives on the inside of us. And he is there to, we learned last uh, two weeks that he's there to convict us, to um, encourage us, to admonish us, to give us courage, to grant us wisdom, to help us understand the scriptures. And then we have the words out of the Bible that say, the people that don't have Christ don't know him. They can't know him. So if you can't know the Holy Spirit because you don't belong to Christ, can you see that all the other stuff you miss out on because you don't have the Holy Spirit? 
So there's people all over the world that read the Bible like any other history book. It's just it's like me studying Islam in grad school or some or some or Baha or whatever other religion that we had to study. I don't know if I said that right, but that's okay. Um, but they read it like that. So, that, but they don't gather, they don't gain that the, the scriptures do not illuminate to them like they do to us because we have the Holy Spirit. And there's, I feel rest assured and promised. I can promise you that if you ask God to help you understand the words that you're reading in the Bible, he will grant you the wisdom needed for what he wants you to know at that time. Okay? You won't find anything new and amazing. It's there. It's always been there. If we start finding things new and amazing in the Bible, and I don't, I'm not talking about to us as Christians because we're always growing, but if we try to find a teaching that's not there in the Bible, we need to be very careful because that's the only standard we have to back everything up with. If we take away the Bible, take away the Holy Spirit, you take away the Bible, then anything goes. So that's very dangerous, okay? So as we begin this, uh, turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. And hold that place. Go to the right, toward the back. And let me, let me pray, and then we'll get started. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are, we are blessed to be here. We're thankful and blessed to be able to gather in freedom at this time. Um, we are facing many struggles, nothing new to you. We shouldn't worry, but we do. We shouldn't be you know, anxious and have anxiety and panic attacks, but we do. And we shouldn't be fearful, but we are. So, Father, my prayer is that you would use today to encourage us, to strengthen us, to help us to stand firm and to walk according to your ways, your commands, Father, and that we can stand and be truly the light on the hillside in this ever-darkening world, that we could be that light that draws people to you as you work through the, Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit through us and in us to be that light, Father. May we represent you well. May we be the example that you've called us to be. And we just ask this, Father, in, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, if I say, well, I asked last week, do you truly desire to live as called by God? If you're a Christian, do you truly desire that? Because if we truly desire that, like Jesse said, if we truly desire to walk as we're called, then we're going to be different. We can't be the same. We're going to be different. And that's, that's supposed to be different no matter where we are. It, we don't compartmentalize life. It, I'm not supposed to live like Andy wants to Monday, and then like Kay wants to Tuesday, and then like the church wants Wednesday, and then my boss wants... Well, I don't have a boss. Let me think about that. The way God wants me to do it in this other, we can't compartmentalize life and call ourselves a Christian. We are supposed to be the living, breathing example of Jesus Christ everywhere and anywhere we go at all times. First of all, in our families and then everywhere else. You can't do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that keeps going, Andy, you shouldn't be doing that. Or you should do this. Have you ever had those tendencies to be at a, uh, at a convenience store or something and something happens and you get that little voice that says, pay for the stuff for the people in front of you? Is, it, is that just me or do some other people do that? Or $10 won't get this guy in this dually very far, maybe give him an extra $10 worth of diesel because you're not going far with $10. That, that's the prompting of the Holy Spirit as far as I know and can understand in the wisdom that I have because my, I'm pretty stingy on my own. I don't like to give that stuff up like that too much. Because some people will accept it and some people think you're weird and got a third eye right here. But that's okay. That's, this is between me and God. So, so that's the Holy Spirit once again. It's good to be a blessing to other people. Okay. We're going to have to get some bigger vests, babe. Can't do this. But anyway, that's our Holy Spirit. So let me ask you this. Garbage in, garbage out, right? 
with computers. Bad data in, bad results, bad data out, right? What about for the Christian? Is it not the same? If we feed on stuff that we're not supposed to feed on, we're putting garbage in, what's going to happen? We're going to start kicking garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. Bad data in, bad data out, or bad results out. We need the Holy Spirit as we do this thing called sanctification, progressive sanctification, meaning be more like Christ today, I mean tomorrow than I am today, and more like Christ today than I was yesterday. Progressive sanctification. We're not where we need to be, and we're not where we ought to be. But as the old saying goes, I think it was John Newton, I'm thankful and blessed that I'm not what I used to be. That's the part of the Holy Spirit. That's, the Holy, that's what the Holy Spirit does with us. He's our guarantee. He helps us transform. So let's look at this life in the Spirit, okay? So verse 25 of chapter 5 in Galatians. If we live by the Spirit, we must also follow the Spirit. If we live by the Spirit, that verse says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Then it says, life in the Spirit, living with a growing awareness of the Spirit's presence and power. Now stop just for a minute. What does, that, what does that mean to you? Life in the Spirit, living with a growing awareness of the Spirit's presence and power. We have Him. We have the Holy Spirit. That's a guarantee. We don't have to ask Him to come in. He's there. But we can't ask Him to, to help us, to grant us wisdom, to help us see things, to help us discern what the will of God is. But the growing awareness, what would that be? Growing awareness of the Spirit's presence and His power. So we have Him. But do we tap into the power? And that, that gets a little weird for me to even say. Do we tap into the power of the Holy Spirit? Do we wait to hear from Him? Do we, do we tap into His power? Or do we run to the old ways and the old habits and the old thoughts and the old ways of talking and the old ways of doing business? Because quite frankly, change is hard. A lot of people don't like change. A lot of people won't change. I know people that are still kicking against computers right now, and we've been doing this computer thing a long time. But they kick against it. I don't know how they live in this world without it, or maybe it's easier. For, I don't know, but... That's what I mean. Do we change? When the Holy Spirit's nudging us, do we change? When we feel him, when we know he's telling us not to do something or to do it, do we care enough about our relationship through Christ, through God, to listen and obey the Holy Spirit? That's the question. That's the question everybody has to answer. We can go through these verses. We can memorize verses. We can know in our head. And we can even know in our heart what the Holy Spirit's there for, what he's supposed to help us with, what he's his whole function and, and, and the whole rationale about the Holy Spirit, but we can still say, no, I'm not going to do it. We can, sear, we can sear the conscience. We can sear the Holy Spirit. We can, we, can, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit's not an it. It's a person, part of the Godhead, fully God, living in the sight of every believer. And we know that the Spirit is with me and in me. We know that. We know the Spirit is with us and in us. We know that. What do we do with it? Is that just a good, like a good um, um, question in a game, a, a, a trivia or something? Uh, no. So we go back to the whole thing again. Why do we listen? What, what makes us want to listen to the Holy Spirit? What makes you want to listen to the Holy Spirit? What makes you want to learn more about God? What makes you want to walk better with Christ today than yesterday? What is it that causes you to do that? You have to want, you have to have a desire to know Christ and know him better each and every day. That's a conscious decision you have to make, especially in America. How many of our days get away from us before we even have an hour awake on a, on a Monday morning or any other morning. 
And we always go like, you know what? I'm going to pray at lunch. I'm going to set my alarm to pray at lunch. What about when you just woke up? You know, what about going to work or anything like that? But you understand what I'm saying? It's a conscious decision. Jesse, you trying to kill me. You, it's a conscious decision. See, the Holy Spirit made me just move that, just like that. But we have to continually think about that. If we don't spend time in the Bible, how are we going to know the Bible? If we don't spend time with other believers, how are we going to know if we're going in the right direction or not? How are we going to be held accountable? How are we going to be challenged? How are we going to be, in, if we're not doing what the Bible tells us to do? And so we have to make the conscious decision. And by doing that, it says, I long, this is what Peter said in his sermon last week at Leander. I long to experience the Spirit's power in me and through me. And the operative word there is I long. I yearn. I want to see the power of the Holy Spirit in me and working through me. It's a conscious decision. Because even though we're saved and even though we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, and you can't get rid of him if you're saved. If you're truly saved, he's there. And you wouldn't want to get rid of him anyway. But if we have that, we still have the old sinful nature that's still there. And if I know most of us in here are old enough, we've seen it pop its ugly head up and laugh at us and stare at us and make us do some stupid things. Still there. That's the battle. It's the battle that Paul talks about in various places in the Bible. And we're going to look at one of those in just a minute. Turn with me. This is after, after listening to Peter's sermon and after thinking about this and, and having my meltdown yesterday, I, I said, okay, where am I reminded? What, what comes to mind if I say I'm going to go to the Bible and I'm going to be reminded that I am to listen to the Holy Spirit and I am to long to see his presence and power working in me and through me for the glory of God. All for the glory of God. Everything is for the glory of God. We fell at that, but that's what we're called to do. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So if I ask myself that question, I'm going to go to the Philippians. That's the Philippians verse that I was talking about. Um, go to the right a few chapters toward the back. And Philippians chapter 4. Verses 1 through 9. He says, so then, in this way, my dearly loved brothers, this is Paul writing, my joy and my crown stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge you, uh, Yodia and Sudike to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you, true partner, to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses every thought. Some of, the, uh, some of your translations will say, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if these, and if there is any praise, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Every time I read that last verse, the Apostle Paul in verse 9 is saying, do what you have learned, received, and heard, and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Huh? That freaks me out to read that verse. But that's where I get the, that's where I go if I want to know. Paul said, live like me in the peace of God. He's telling them the peace of God will be with him with them. That's the goal we're shooting for. That they see me, they see you, they see our church, they see us in the community, they see us at the lake, the river, wherever they see us, do they see Christ living in and through us? 
and I've said this before, this is my, y'all are just in on my conversation with God on these sermons, okay? It's, 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 I fell miserably, quite embarrassingly so sometimes. But that is the verse, those are the verses when I thought about it, that's what I want. And Paul says this in other places too. So that's what, that's what I want to live like. And I don't make it, but I'm getting better. What verses will you think about when you do yours, when you think about that, okay? What verses remind you to rely on the Holy Spirit? Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Go back to the left, Romans chapter 8. A lot of verses today, um, but I felt like we just, need to, we just need to solidify this whole thing about this Holy Spirit. It's not, we don't have to keep asking him to come in. He's there. And I think we miss that sometimes. So if we go to Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 5, it says, Therefore, no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus, because the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. What the law could not do since it was limited by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his son in flesh like ours under sin's domain and as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be accomplished in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those whose lives are according to the flesh, think about the things of the flesh, but those whose lives are according to the spirit about the things of the spirit. We are to think about things of the Spirit. What is that? What are the, well, there's the fruit of the Spirit starting at love and going through self-control. That's a good place to start because we can't do those very well. We can't do them perfectly. Just focus on that. But it says, those that are focused on the flesh do fleshly things. That's more of that garbage in, garbage out. Good data in, good results out. And I think if I have to have one of those statements where I say, if you don't remember anything else that we talk about today, remember this. You will never, ever, 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 a thousand million ever be able to walk a life pleasing to God without the power of the Holy Spirit. You can cancel it if you can't do it. You can't do it. You can hang on by a thread, if that's what you want, if, you, if that's what you want to try to do. But that reminds me of walking on a ledge. And if you go this way, kind of like doing what they do when they uh, climb Mount Everest. On one side, you know, they're, they're walking a, a little three-foot narrow path going to the summit, and it's unbearable, un, inhumane conditions. And on one side, they can lay down on the mountain and probably freeze to death, or they can fall and fall five, six, seven thousand 7,000 feet. Either way is not too good if you don't keep going. You got to keep going. We don't rest. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to sit on our blessed assurance and do nothing. We have to keep going. We have to keep on the path. And that path is, that path is illuminated by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to lay over on the side and freeze to death. And I don't want to be run over by the world's ways. And I sure don't want to self-sabotage myself and jump off have to be conscious of it. Is everybody with me so far? Everybody good? Okay? So garbage in, garbage out, good data in, good results out. But if you're not feeding on the Word, if you're not praying, if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit, if you're not making time for Him, if you're not living like you know to live, and trust me, there are ways, we don't have to pray about most of it. We know what we should do and what we shouldn't do. For the most part, on the big, big tickets, we know. I don't have to pray about not lying. I know not to lie. I don't have to pray about the rest of it. I know, okay? And that's the Holy Spirit once again reminding me of that. One little fib may blow up and be a huge ball of turmoil for our church, for my family, for one of you. Think about that. One hiccup. Pete Rose, who's baseball fans in here? Any baseball fans? There's a few of us. I mean, we're, we're like chicken teeth, I think. But they're just not. Um, 
I'm sorry, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> Pete Rose. Should be in the Hall of Fame or not? Should he be in the Hall of Fame or not? On his playing abilities, he should be, right? Why is he not? Cheating. How? Betting on baseball games he played in. Hello. Should he be in the should he be in Cooperstown? Yeah. Charlie Hustle. He was a great, but he'll I don't think he'll ever make it. I say that to say this. It's not how we start this thing we call the Christian life. It's how we finish. And you need the Holy Spirit every step of the way. How many of us have heard of pastors of multiple, just huge churches falling? Because for whatever reason, they think it's okay to take their secretary on trips and stay in the same hotel room. Uh, no. I, think, I don't even have to pray about that. That's wrong. Plus, she would kill me. So there's some strong, I mean, there's a godly, there's a godly fear of God, then there's a godly fear of my wife. <laughs> that ain't funny, she's serious. <laughs> But I would not want to do that. Why? Well, you know what? I would like to say all the times it's because it's a sin against God. I know that. But you know what? That's not a lot of the first things I spit out. I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't want to embarrass her. An atheist could do that. I got to remind myself, yes, she, God gave her to me. Love of my life. We have a solid marriage. We're doing we're doing the best we can. We're trying to, we're just, we're focused. We're not perfect, but we're focused. But it's still the God's honor and glory. It's not the K's honor and glory. And it's not the Andy's honor and glory. And it's not to either your glory and honor. God's honor first. And then however he wants to play that out, that's his, that's, that's, that's his pay grade. That's what he does. I don't have to worry. He wants me to share the gospel. He wants me to live as called and he wants me to be a good example and, and to live with a, 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 a spirit of awe about him which the Holy Spirit keeps reminding me. And that's what freaked me out yesterday. You just, it, sometimes you feel so, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you feel so overwhelmed in a task that you know you can do, but it still gets so heavy. And then I start that negative thinking that, Bad thinking, negative thoughts. Um, what, what did you, ants, tell me what that is one more time. Automatic negative thoughts. That's a great book. I'm not going to, we'll get, I'll, I'll share it later. Automatic negative thoughts. Does any of us have those? I do. Yesterday was prime example. I should have been at Bill's. But I started getting afraid that I wasn't going to be prepared because of the week, and I started doubting everything I wanted to do. So I got about an hour of sleep last night, some excitement, some worry, some anxiety. But I, I was chasing the wrong thoughts. And the Holy Spirit the whole time telling me, hey, dummy, that's not you. That's not you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you just trying to make everybody mad? Are you just trying to get them all against you? Nope. So that's the way it plays out. That's, that's real life that we have to live. But the Bible tells me by the power, because of the spirit, because of what Christ did, there's no condemnation of, of, of the guilt that was on me before I'm saved. I will never worry about, I will never have to worry about hell, death, and the grave. Sometimes it creeps in. But I never have to worry about that. But I don't know if y'all do, but sometimes I do. I'm not perfect. God doesn't love me. And it's not so much a pity party as it is a real big pity party. I can't do it right. God knows. And it sounds like Moses all over again. I can't speak well. Take your brother. Well, I can't do this. Throw it down on the ground and watch what I do. Well, that's still not good enough. Okay, let's watch the blood turn the Nile. I mean, let's watch the Nile turn the blood. Let's, all of that, it just goes over and over and over in my mind. 
But the same Holy Spirit that worked back then, the same Spirit of God that was with Moses and Aaron and Miriam and all of the Old Testament and the prophets and everything else is the same Holy Spirit we have today. There's not one for the Old Testament and one for the New. All the same one. He's God. He's God. It's all the same Holy Spirit. Didn't call him the Holy Spirit. One of those times. I'm still smiling on the inside. I love y'all too. Who said that, Bill? Who said that? Oh, Jeff. You got it out for me today, man. And I'll brag on him just for a minute. I don't know what y'all think, but the guy's got talent. We're blessed to have him. Fun. And I think Jessica started to clapping, if I'm not correct. If I'm I think she told me. Same Holy Spirit in the Old Testament that we got to, that we have today. Do we realize that? When we read the Old Testament, ah, the Spirit of God was with Elijah and with Elijah. The Spirit of God was with the other prophets. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Same Spirit that led him, the same Spirit that lives on the side of me and you. God used it a little differently because Christ did not come and he was still working on the people of Israel so he could get Christ out of that group of people. It's the same Holy Spirit. So as we look, let's go over to Romans 12. I'm a few pages over if you're following. Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. God's will is not a secret. Your default answer for what is the will of God, your default answer needs to be to praise Him, to glorify His name first and foremost in anything and everything you do. We need work to do it, and we still need to practice and get help, but if I put it down here, is that going to be, is that okay down there? Okay. This is not part of the sermon, guys. I didn't want, this is not. Might be the Holy Spirit's way of going. Go to Bill's next time, won't you? You'll be at Bill's next time, won't you, big boy? Yeah, I will. Um, so we, we, we look at it, it says, do not be conformed. Living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pleasing to God. Those words, those all are words we continually are being transformed. We're continually trying to be pleasing to God. We don't want to be conformed to this world. But is the battle won once and done? Or do we have to fight that battle every day we wake up to not be transformed by the world? You watch 10 minutes of, I don't care what news you watch. Fox, CNN, MSNBC, I don't care, Google, Apple, I don't care what it is. About 15 minutes of it, you're ready to go out and strangle somebody. At least I do. And I don't watch it. I get about five minutes of it, and I have to read it. I can't hear it because it will go, I will go over the edge. And so I'll read some of it, but then I, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, I need to know what's going on. I need to be at least educated on the things going on in our world. I think that's a little naive. But I don't have to sit there and feed myself on it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's easy to do. It's easy to do. I don't think that's what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. I asked him last week or week before to spend 15 extra minutes a day. How are we doing on that? Don't show your hand because I've missed a couple, three or four. But I have to consciously say I'm not going to. Because I know to do it. So at that point in time, 
I do not want to please God like I know to do. And I think that's real for all of us. I really do. And it's not condemnation. It's just we can get so busy. We can be so busy. We can be so focused on what we have to do in our earthly bodies and on our earthly journey that we forget about God, the Holy Spirit, bless you, the God, the Holy Spirit, heaven. We forget about it all. And then it's four or five days, and oh, I'm at church on Sunday. Yeah, I might go. Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll stay home. Maybe I'll listen to it. Maybe I'll catch it later. Well, I'm praying, I'm begging that we all can come here on Sunday, not because you may get some glorious revelation, because you may be an encouragement to somebody else that's really hurting. Let's get practical about it. It's not that you may come to church to worship because we are told to do in Hebrews chapter 9, I believe. But we're there for the betterment, if you will, of the people that are going to be there as well. I don't like to come all the time, just to be brutally honest. I might not feel good. I might hurt. But I never leave here the same. You come with the right reasons, you'll never leave the same. Because now we know a little bit more than we did. We know a little bit better ways that we may go about our life. So if we go through these slides, I want to just I want to just draw to twelve uh, chapter twelve verse two one more time. Keep on being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when it says stop being conformed by this age, one verse up. Just think of the age as the time between Christ's first coming and Christ's second coming. In between there is the age that we live in. No matter when you're born, after Christ came the first time, in the age, that's, that's, what, that's a good reference, a good reminder, maybe a good focus point. It's, it's, it's not talking about specifically 21st century America. We've got to get that thinking out of our head. This Bible is written so we can take this sermon and go anywhere in the world to a group of Christians anywhere else, and through a translator if needed, we should be able to preach the same sermon anywhere in the world. If we can't do that, I need to do something different. If we can't preach it anywhere else in the world, because why? Holy Spirit's the same over in China as it is here. He's the same, he's the same Holy Spirit. So we've got to be able to stay consistent. We've got to be able to listen to the prodding of the Holy Spirit when we're doing whatever, teaching, reading, teaching our kids or grandkids, disciplining our kids, disciplining, being disciplined, being challenged. Um, we've got to stay on that. We've got to stay on the narrow path. Because if we go to the right, we'll get run over, so to speak, or we'll freeze to death or we'll burn up. And if we go to the left, we just give up and jump. God says, no, never promised you this life was going to be easy. You will have troubles. But take care. I've overcome the troubles in the world. I've overcome the world. The devil is still my devil, not mine, God's. God still controls him, even though he's giving him a little rain right now to do whatever he wants to do under God's watchful and controlling hand and will. But we have the Holy Spirit to keep us from doing that. Do we listen? Do we care to listen? Do we choose to live a life pleasing to God? That's the bottom line once again. So as we wrap up, I'm trying to think where I want to end. I don't want, you know what? Okay, let's look at the words I gave you and let's just take a brief, let's just look at those briefly. It says, walk by the Spirit. How, how can we do that? What can I give us today that will help us to remember to walk by the Spirit? Well, it needs to be intentional. We've talked about that. You intentionally have to want to go walk by the Spirit. You have to make that conscious decision. No matter where you are throughout the day, it's a conscious decision that we obey or disobey God's laws and commands, okay? God's law and command. We've got to do it continually. It's not one and done. If I don't stay on that straight and narrow path, trusting the Holy Spirit's guidance, reading the word, 
I'm going to go to the right or to the left, and neither one is good for a believer in Christ Jesus. Okay? So we need to do it intentionally. We need to do it continually. I think um, John Piper once said his definition of prayer was an intentional communication with God. I like that. It's an intentional communication with God. Now, that intention may be God help now. But it's still an intentional thought, and you're still crying out to God. Okay? We have, mm, oh. we have to walk humbly. Humbly. We have to be humble. We, 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 want to, we want to be yielded and dependent on the Holy Spirit. We've talked about nobody can live the life of a believer, the life of a Christian, without the power of the Holy Spirit. As soon as you start thinking you can do it on your own, you're in trouble. Before one result of your bad decisions, garbage in, garbage out, comes about, you're already in trouble if you think you don't need him. And there are people out there that say they're, there are people that will profess to be Christians, Bible-thumping Christians, but they see the Holy Spirit as the sin police. They see other believers when we try to challenge one another, hold each other accountable. They see us as a sin police. That's not, that's not what we're doing at all. Not at all. Go ahead. John, put, that, put the pursuing spiritual practices to renew, to renew our minds up there. That's a good slide. Just leave that one right there until we're done. Pursuing spiritual practices to renew our minds, okay? So we're intentional. We're continual. We're humble and humbly walking. Number four, we have to do it in an obedient manner. We obey God's law. There's not more than, it's just God's law. It's all one. You can't, they're not little laws like we have in the States. We can't get a speeding ticket but still be okay. That's not, if we sin, we sin against all of God's law. Everybody okay with that, right? We're still required to obey the Ten Commandments, the moral law of God. Think about how our country would be if we would just do that. Just take the last six and do the last six. You can't do it faithfully without the power of the Holy Spirit. I promise you. We see it every day. We don't obey our parents. We murder either physically or in our hearts. I'll steal one from Vody Bachman once again. If you can't say amen, you ought to say ouch because that's what we do. We lie, we cheat, we steal, we covet. We don't love. What is it? Love, joy, peace, patience, con. Love, joy, peace, patience, con. <laughs> Galatians 22 and 23, okay? <laughs> love, joy, peace, patience. Love and self control, okay? We can't even do those two, plus the other seven in there. And then lastly, we have to do it prayerfully. We have the Holy Spirit, but it's okay to ask him to help you to walk in the way that you should walk. Help keep me on the straight and narrow. People are going to think it's boring. I don't care. People are going to think we're weird. I don't care. Well, that sounds good right now in church, but sometimes I do. And sometimes I fear man, and I shouldn't do that. I don't think I'm alone in that, but... We have to be very careful of that. Shouldn't fear man. I've got everything I need to live a life that's pleasing to God. I have the Holy Spirit. I have salvation in Christ. I have the word. I have you, my church. Why can't I live in a more constant? Why can't I live in a more continual basis in pleasing God? That's my question. That's our challenge for this week, Okay. So to walk by the Spirit, we, got, we have to be intentional. We have to do it continually. We have to be humble. We have to walk humbly before our God. We have to be obedient to the prodding, to the uncle, whatever you want to call the Holy Spirit, not what you want to call him, whatever you want to call the, the sense that you think, whatever he's doing, if it squares with the Bible, there's, you don't have to pray about it. Just go do it or don't do it, okay? He's not going to lead you to sin. And then we have to do it prayerfully. We have to be almost in a constant state of prayer. And we don't, have to, we don't have to close our eyes to do that. And if we're driving, we don't, sure don't need to do that. Or walking in San Saba, 
you've got to be careful at those crosswords. At these, with our intersections, be careful. You close your eyes or have your head down looking at your phone, you may get run at. I don't know that. I'm just telling. But it almost happened because I was not paying attention. Don't be transformed. I mean, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not go after the things of this world. Holy Spirit is there as our guarantee to guide us, to comfort us, and we're going to continue to look at the life in the Spirit for the next seven weeks. I pray that, I, I pray, you know why I'm going to read this. I pray that this has been helpful. Um, I pray that it's, that it's maybe opened up some eyes to help us to even walk in a more humble and a more obedient manner. But let me just go to this. Just listen to this. In Romans chapter 16, the very end of the, you know, we got the first 11 chapters of Romans are all doctrine and teaching and faith and all of that. What's wrong with Israel? What's wrong with us, the Gentiles? And then the last four is all how to walk practically with God. But here's how Paul closes the book. Now to him who has power to strengthen you according to the gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the sacred secret kept silent for long ages, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic scriptures, according to the command of, each of the eternal God to advance the obedience of faith among all nations to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. Thank you for being long-suffering with us, Father, when we don't even think about it. But we want you to be long-suffering with us when we don't even truly think about how long-suffering you really are and how much grace and mercy you show us. Help us to be what you've called us to be. Give us the strength and courage to be the light on the hill Help us to respond to the Holy Spirit. Help us to help others respond as well. Father, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.